Overwatch 2 matchmaking is without a doubt the worst pile of... Wait, my phone is ringing. Give me one second. It's my editor, Chunk. Wait, I'm not allowed to swear in the first 30 seconds, otherwise I'm gonna get demonetized? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna wait until like a minute in, okay? Yeah, to roll yeah. them. All right, <laughs> thanks for letting me know. Yeah, Later, I'm bye. Well, if you know anything about me, I try to stay out of all the, the drama, the negativity, the rage baiting that is going on in Overwatch right now. The game has a lot of issues, but at its core, it's still a game I love. It's still a game I really enjoy playing every day. And I think the game could go really far, to be honest. I think it could do really well. It could be one of the best shooters on the market. You can make fun of me, but not with this. And I didn't want to make another video. I made, an, uh, made a video like a few months back about the matchmaking and it has only gotten worse. Uh, improve matchmaking, improve matchmaking, improve matchmaking, literally every patch. And I don't notice a lot of changes. Or when I notice changes, they're for the worse. You know, I'm just a small icon creator for Overwatch. Everyone has said it, you know, if you if you follow the community on YouTube and on Twitch especially, a lot of people are unhappy with the matchmaking, with the state of the game in general. I think the game is great. Don't mistake me rambling about matchmaking for issues with balance, issues with content, etc, etc. At the core of the game for me, it is a competitive game. I know there's a lot of casuals and that's great. I know there's a lot of players that play comp like, you know, maybe once a week. And uh, there's a lot of players that are looking forward to the PvE. But at its core, you know, you have the Overwatch League, you have the World Cup going on right now, which is really fun to watch. It is a competitive game. A competitive game can only live if the competitive matchmaking is working. And right now, it really feels like the matchmaking is not working at all. In case you don't know me and you're like, uh, who is this guy? Does he have any clue about the game? Uh, I've played Overwatch for seven years. I've been through all the ups and downs, you know, I've been through the content route of Overwatch 1. And I've also played a lot of other competitive multiplayer games before Overwatch. I was really high ranked in Dota way, way back in the day. I played with the GOATs in Dota like Dendi, TI3, TI4, Navi. I was global in Counter-Strike and while I'm not a pro, I do know a lot about how matchmaking should feel like in competitive games. I can confidently say Overwatch has been the worst of the worst. Games feel decided before the game even starts. I don't know about you guys. I play in uh, top 500 slash GM most of the time. Most of my games, I would say 80% feel decided on the picking screen. Yeah, there are these outliers of like really close and fun games, how Overwatch should be. How many games do you feel like are actually close and fun? It's not fun for me to lose instantly, get steamrolled and there's no chance of me coming back. It's also not fun for me to win the game instantly and having to do nothing. It really feels like in a lot of the games, my impact doesn't matter. What is the point of me playing when in 80% of games, it really feels like I'm not even learning a lot, right? You might say you can always do better. Some people think every game is winnable. I think that's complete bullshit. And don't mistake this. I know I have a series on YouTube where I, I prove that Elo Hell isn't real. And I still stand by that. I don't think Elo Hell is real. Elo Hell implies no matter how good you are, you can't get to the right rank. But what I do think the issue is you need a ton of games to get to the SR you belong to. And that is 100% true. Some games just feel unwinnable slash unlosable. Even if 99% of your games are decided instantly, right? If 99% of the games are 50-50s and only 1% of the games are decided by you over the span of a few thousand games, right? You would still get to the rating you belong. You get what I'm saying, right? And I think that's true in Overwatch. And obviously it's not 99%, like maybe like a one third, one third, one third, where one third you can't win, one third you can't lose. And then one third, you can actually control the outcome of the game with your own skill. What that means is that means for every three hours you play, two are pointless. And when I played other games in the past, it did not feel that way. You might also say Overwatch is a very complicated game. There's snowball mechanics, right? Like the devs have talked about the reasons why they think that is, right? Like when the, the first team that wins the fight has the old advantage and then they keep on snowballing. And I do think these are all fair points but I do not think they excuse what is happening with the matchmaking right now, okay? To get into more specifics. Placing new accounts and placing accounts that haven't played in a while are completely inaccurate. There's people that have been coming back after years and years of not playing the game and they play the game and they get straight up in GM. If you lose games early on in your placements, you will get relegated down really fast or relegated up really fast if you win a lot. And these are all nice systems, but they don't work if every single game is so coin flippy. The funny thing is a really bad player could get on my account right now, log on and play on my account. And there is chances that in some, on some days, 
They would straight up win on my main account and climb me in top 500 account boosting. I would get boosted because the other team just has even, even worse players. And because the rating is so inaccurate for every single player in the lobby or most players in the lobby, it really feels like the matchmaking can't even tell anymore what's good and what's bad. I'm only human after all. Ever since season three, people have been climbing and gaining a ton of SR. There's way more people in GM now. A lot of people climb from, let's say, platinum slash diamond all the way up to GM, right? And I'm not saying improvement can't, can't happen. If you play the game regularly, you're gonna improve just like everyone else is gonna improve with you. There's some players that play less than you. They're probably gonna improve less than you. Some people learn faster. Some people learn slower. There's a lot of factors, right? We can, we can talk about this all day. Point is, I can look at two completely separate players in a, the GM rank, Grandmaster, let's say Grandmaster 1, the highest rank in the game other than top 500, the best 500 players, and they can be completely different skill levels realistically. And on paper, the matchmaker thinks, hey, this is a fair match. They have almost the exact same rating. But then you look at their accounts and one of them is like a veteran of Overwatch 1, like Unsalted Salt, for example, on Tank. I had a game yesterday with him or against him. Consistently top 500 over seven years. And then I look at my tank on my team and it's a player that has been in GM once this season and has been diamond slash masters every other season. And you're telling me that is a fair matchup because they're right now the same on paper. On stream, I found a brick player that climbed from bronze to GM. Score. It's not rally to me, it's rally into fucking bronze! Woo! Blizzard! And he climbed all the way up to GM in three seasons. The difference between Diamond and Masters is like twice the skill on average. And the difference between Masters and GM is like twice the skill. And then it goes even higher once you get into the upper ranks, right? There's an insanely big difference right now between GM5 and GM1. The skill difference between a Bronze player and a GM player is insane. And I played with this guy and I, I, I gave up on checking profiles before the game starts, right? So I tried to avoid it and I tried to keep an open mind. But then you play with them and you watch them play with you and you can just tell that person shouldn't be in Grandmaster, right? I think this entire issue that I'm describing is the same issue in every rank. When I do VOD reviews, check out the ELO Hell series I do, sometimes I see people that are in Masters where I'm like, yesterday I watched a Plat player and they, he played way better. And everyone has bad and good games. It just seems so inaccurate, no matter what I watch, right? I used to be able to very easily predict what a rank of a person is by just watching their replays because you can tell like, you know, it's not a thing anymore. Like sometimes I watch a Masters player, I'm like, how the hell are they above the rank of Silver? And then I watch a Silver's player and I go, how is this guy not like at least Diamond? You know, like people are asking for rank resets, like resets everyone's rank and like then it's going to be uh, all, all fixed. It wouldn't fix anything. In fact, it would make it worse. I don't think the devs should reset rank right now. If the underlying system that evaluates you, right, doesn't work, it doesn't matter how often you reset the rank. Ranking, uh, resetting the rank only matters once the underlying system is actually working and the underlying system is not working. Another example. Yesterday I had a person that hasn't played for two seasons, okay? So hasn't played for four months. And the very last time they played, they were a diamond peak. And the highest they've ever peaked in their lives were low masters, okay? Ah, a player that has not played since season two is now in a GM game without being placed. Nice Blizzard. This guy has never been in GM in his life. He didn't even place yet! How? Peaked Diamond 5. And they got into my GM2 game, or it was like even a GM1 average game, like a really high SR game, in their placements. So the last time they ever played, they were Diamond at best. You might say, oh, Metro, it's a smurf, like, right? Like someone bought the account, but he just started playing again. So even if there was the best player in the world, like Proper or Kefster on that account, they shouldn't be in a GM game after a few games played. It's not like they had an insane like 50-0 score. They went like three and three before they were placed in that game. How is that possible? They didn't play ranked. I don't know if you've seen the, the, the clip, ML7 uploaded a video. There's a new system now. If you've not placed comp at all, it now takes you a quick play rating and it puts you into a rank it thinks you deserve. So there was a brick player that has never been higher than Diamond in their lives in Overwatch 1. They didn't play ranked at all for the entirety of Overwatch 2 ever since the game launched. They only played quick play. They went five and four, so they were up one game and they placed in Grandmaster 1, the highest rank in the game, without having played comp once ever. 
You could have a top 500 player and quick player just chilling, playing like mediocre. And then you could have like a plat player or a diamond player trying really hard in quick play. That plat player that's trying really hard in quick play might be placed higher than the top 500 player just chilling. It's two different game modes. How are you going to give a person that has never experienced a grandmaster environment the highest rank in the game? The devs go, that just shows the matchmaking is working because he went 5-4 and four in GM1, so obviously he belongs into GM1. First off, 9 games are not a big sample size. Everyone and their mother has lost 9 games in a row or won 9 games in a row. It can happen very easily with how random and shitty this fucking matchmaking is. Have you ever considered the fact that the other team also maybe has a random person that shouldn't be there that lost, uh, lost the game? It makes me angry to see the ranks just being thrown around without making any sense. And then they say, they come out and they say decay is gone completely. I play on my main, I have some really good games that are pretty easy. Like I go in and I just win for free. And then I go on an account that is way lower rated. And I have unwinnable game after unwinnable game after unwinnable game. When I try my hardest and play even better arguably than on my main account. In the background footage, so far what you've seen by the way. Three games I've played where after I was like, I'm gonna uninstall. It, like it, those three games, were, which were back to back to back, made me quit the, the stream for the day. Like I've played really, really well in those games and they were completely unwinnable. Like one of them came down to being kind of close at the end, but it felt demoralizing to play those games. You really feel it. Like you're feeling like today I'm in the zone. I play the best Overwatch I usually play. I should win when you can really tell you're doing absolutely amazing and you're like, there's no point. I'm killing everyone and we're still losing. Oh, I didn't kill five this fight, guess we lose. Oh, I didn't kill five this fight, guess we lose. I'm sure you support and for the one tank that's watching, you feel the same, right? I don't know how exactly you managed to fuck up the matchmaking so badly. We're all human, right? There's a lot of factors in a game. Synergy, team composition, right? People have good days, people have bad days. But every other game has those two. Dota has those two. The, the frequency with how often these unwinnable or unlosable games happen is ridiculous to me. So in Overwatch 1, there was an SR number. So you could exactly, after every single game, you could exactly see what happened, right? You would win and you would gain 25 SR. You could see your exact number. I know they have something similar now where you can see the percentage of rank you're in. But the system itself makes no sense. At the end of last season, right, I had both my main account here and my Smurf in, in high top 500 or like mid, mid top 500. Like they were like top 200, top 300 around there. So I decided end of season, oh, I'm going to try to push my luck a bit and push a bit more, more on my alt account because I wanted my alt account in top 200 as well. So I played on my alt account and I went five and two. I dropped out of top 500 completely. Dropping out of top 500 completely is probably like 400 SR lost. That would be the equivalent of like losing like 20 games or something. Was it because I didn't play enough during the season, right? I thought Decay is gone. They're not telling us anything. And I have a direct line to Blizzard and I asked them and they couldn't even tell me why. How is the average player gonna feel when one of the content creators for your games that has a direct line to you cannot tell what is actually happening to their account? Wait, you won more games than you lost? Let me put you down a bit for no reason. You're gonna learn to do what I fucking tell you to. How would you feel? Would you come back the next day if you were an average player playing more? No, 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 now you're in gold, even though you just won. You have a above 50% win rate, but let's put you in gold instead. I'm not the only person with that issue, by the way. I know of multiple others that had similar issues. Sky Yessi, for example, Great Mercy streamer, had a period of time where she kept on winning games and after every game she won, she would drop in rank. And you could see like the number going down until she dropped out of top 500 while winning. If SR was only based on wins and losses, that would mean every single win I get, I get around 25 rating. If you don't know what that means in Overwatch 2 numbers, it means one fourth of a rank, right? So if I win four in a row, I would rank up one. It's sad that I have to explain to you the, this because the game doesn't, but... So let's say you were at the low end of uh, Masters 3. Let's make it simple and say Masters 1 would be the equivalent of 3,000... 900 SR until 3999. So let's say you are you are at like 3910. What what that would mean is on average you would need four wins without losses to climb, right? So if you went five and one, you would climb. One card, five wins, one loss, right? Would be 25 times five, which is 125. Then you lost one game. That's minus 25, which would net you exactly a hundred SR. 3, 9, 10 plus 100, you would 
probably very likely get into GM5 because you would be 4,000 NSR. In this scenario, if you go five wins, two losses, it would mean you would only get 75 SR. And if you do the math with 75 here, you wouldn't get over the 4,000 threshold and you wouldn't get into GM5. You know, there's a lot of cases where you don't climb, even though you are climbing, you just don't see a difference in your rank. I'm not, gonna, I'm not too upset about that, but I need to know how the ranking system works. Why do I randomly drop out of top 500 by winning? And now I'm sitting here, I'm like, do I even want to play more? Nothing in this system makes sense. I get that if new players come in and there's a normal distribution that the players that I've played for a while longer should be higher SR. I get that. But I get people in Grandmaster games that should never be in Grandmaster. They are completely clueless. Like complete outliers. Watch Overwatch League players play the game. They have to deal with like random Diamond players flaming them because the Diamond players have never played in Grandmaster. And then they go walk up to an Overwatch League player and call them bad. I had that today. Where a random plat player, Egoed Hadi, Hardy, one of the tanks in Overwatch League, really good player. Because that player thinks, oh, I'm now at the highest rank. I, I know everything. And what they don't realize is they're playing with a player that's like 10 times better than them. And they don't realize that the only reason they're so high is because Blizzard gave them the rating, even though they don't deserve it. The matchmaking just feels all over the place to the point where I don't want to play the game anymore. And this brings me back to the start of this, this video. I know there is a side to Overwatch that only plays casually. And I know there's a side that's only going to enjoy the PvE or, you know, have fun and play quick play only. You do realize, Blizzard, a big part of your player base is competitive players. You made a league around this game, the Overwatch League. You charged companies millions of dollars to get a franchise. To the point when there's now teams already leaving. Chengdu Hunters bought for multi-millions. and They only lost money year after year. Why? Because nobody wants to play competitive anymore. Because the competitive system is not working. You're saying you're transparent. And I appreciate the updates you're giving. Your communication has improved drastically ever since the start of Overwatch 2 and it's only getting better. You're trying to add more systems that make it more clear what's happening. I appreciate there is a change this season where you can see your top 500 rank update after every game. Players that haven't played for a season get decayed. I haven't seen that work yet. We'll, we'll have to see how that works. I, I, the thing is, I know the devs. I think they're great people and I think they're trying. I'm not saying I could do better than them. We need to know why something is happening. Why am I randomly losing ranks? And why is there, st there still such a big skill discrepancy between multiple players on the same rank? And again, I'm speaking from a perspective of a player that plays on pretty high rank. I don't know how it feels for you guys on low ranks. Please let me know in the comments. I want to love the game and I think the balance actually is quite good again. And I'm actually really excited for Flashpoint in season six. Looks really good. And I'm also somewhat excited for the PvE. Like I'm not a PvE fan myself, but I'm going to play it a bunch, you know. But eventually I'll go back to comp. And it doesn't matter how many new fun and shiny things there are in comp. If 80% of my time spent is spent in games that are already decided, that are so one-sided, I can't have any impact. Let me know how you feel in the comments, please. Does it feel better to you than in season two, if you've played in season two? There is some things that are clearly not working. I can only encourage if any one of the devs are watching to look into those issues. I want you to look at the, see the evaluation of random GM1 players and you compare them against each other and you see how well the GM1 players are, perfor are performing that are new to GM1 versus those that have been in the same rank, high rank for a long time. Just had to get that out of my system where gonna get back to regular content in the next video. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching and see you. Bye bye.